Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Watercolor Wednesday. I'm Leslie Watkins. I hope you're all staying warm. I know that much of the country is in frigid Arctic degrees. Here in New England, the temperature is about 20 degrees or so today. Um, and it's a beautiful sunny day and we've had a, a light coating of snow. So everything looks very pretty. And I thought I would do a quick winter snow scene for you today. So I'm going to try out my new glass palette. And, um, and I have a few things. I've got my water painters. I've got a couple of pieces of the Distress Gold paper that I've cut out using the deckled rectangle dies. They look like this. And I have some very vanilla cardstock. This is the thick cardstock. A couple of envelopes, matching envelopes. And I have my fluid. 100 watercolor paper and I have enough supplies here for two cards so I thought what I would do would be to paint one quick sketch on the 5 by 7 and then cut out two pieces to use on two different cards so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to give my paper a spritz. I just grab my spritzer, give that a, a light misting. Let that soak in for a minute. And because I haven't used the water-based inks for a while, I thought I'd get those out. So here we go. And it looks like I need a little more ink on here. So I'm just using my water-based ink as my paints today. So I'm just going to put a couple of drops of yellow. drop of red and some blue. With your yellow, red, and blue, you can mix all the colors of the rainbow. So that's all you need. I'm going to grab my middle brush And I'm going to go ahead and spritz my palette to get that ready. And off to the side here, I have a couple of water containers. One for clean water, one for dirty water. And I also have a kitchen sponge. And that's it. Oh, one more thing. I have a couple of paper towels. All right, I'm ready to begin. Now, if you are a follower of my Facebook group or on um, Facebook page, I should say, or on my Instagram, which is also Dandelion Cottage uh, Design, you may have noticed a reel that I posted recently that depicts a kind of a pine tree in a in a wintry scene and that's what I have in mind. I'm just going to do a very quick study just to get the impression and my my papers getting plenty wet enough now so I think you can see that all right, so that there's a little bit of water still on the surface, but mostly it has begun to be absorbed by the paper, and that's what I'm looking for. So let me get this lined up here, and I'm going to zoom you in so that you can see a little bit better. 
Does anybody else have one of these glass pallets or, or mats? These are, these, um, it's called the Glass Mat Studio, I think. And it comes with a couple of additional accessories and it's something you can get for free. And I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. So, um, this is, although this is a landscape view, I'm going to be painting these things as though they are verticals. And I'm just going to start with some very pale pigment, get the sky started, being careful not to put my brush in my coffee, which I almost just did. You may want to keep your coffee cup on the opposite side of where you keep your water. <laughs> I have been known to do that on, on the odd occasion. But there's a, there's a little bit of, of something on the paper there just to get the, the idea of a, of a sky started. And then, of course, there is a tree line. And I'm just going to get that started using plenty of water. And I want to keep enough of the paper white to indicate where the, the snow is on the ground. So I'm going to um, stop right there with the tree line. But what I am going to do is I'm going to start to just indicate some sort of tree shapes in the background. All right, and this is this is blue with a little bit of red in it. There might be a little bit of yellow, not too much, but basically I'm just using what's on my palette. I'm looking at this more in terms of tone and temperature, not not color. All right, so there is the beginning of that. And since I have this on the brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and sort of dry brush. Some places on the ground plane. All right, so, so that only took a couple of seconds. Now what I wanna do is take a, a little bit of yellow into my blue and, um, and start to indicate this pine tree. I'm just checking my settings, making sure that you can see and hear me okay. And that looks fine. And I see some people out there. So hi, Sandra. Hey, Patricia. Good morning. Nice to see you both. Did either of you happen to see the um, the little reel I made on on my personal page with the snow falling? It was so pretty yesterday. So that's kind of what I'm going for today. So there's a there's an idea of pine tree. And this by the way is the same pine tree that those turkeys, those wild turkeys like to roost in. And they're so funny. Um, they would come up from the meadow below at night and I heard, a, I heard all this squabbling and a commotion up in the tree and I looked up and I could just make out the mother turkey. There may have been more than one. And, uh, and all the babies trying to get underneath her wings to settle down for the night. And her babies at that point had grown up. They were almost as big as she was. So there was no way any of them were gonna be able to get underneath. <laughs> mom for a cozy warm spot and um, 
very, very amusing. So, so there are the turkey. There is the turkey tree two times. Now I'm taking a kind of a warmer tone and there's a lot of, um, a lot of branches and sticks below. I have, um, I have various shrubs growing in this area. So some of these things might be ilex, they might be winterberry. Um, I've got some clethra. So a lot of, a lot of, I grow a lot of shrubs that have value to the wildlife. So whether it's uh, for pollinators or berries for the birds or something that has three season interest. That's what we're looking at here. Of course, it's all gone dormant now for winter. And I'll just indicate some branches. So simply by varying your strokes, because much of this paper was wet towards the top, I was able to get those nice soft edges. Now down below here, of course, it's much drier. And so now I can actually do a little more sketching with the tip of my brush. Just add a little more detail. I can, I can add a little more blue and a little more red to the mix. Get that fuzz off of there. All right, and now the um, let's see if that pine tree is a little bit drier now and see if we can add some detail to that. So I'm going back to my blue with a drop of yellow in it. And it's still pretty wet, but I can start to add a little more value to the center of the tree where the shadows are. And just kind of drop that in and let the ink move. Now the inks are very much like watercolors. You use them pretty much the same way. They just move a little bit differently because they have a finer pigment particle to them. They're, they're mostly dye colors. So they just move a little bit um, differently on the on the paper than the watercolors will, which sometimes can be uh, minerals or organic colors, all sorts of things, and they might travel on the surface of the paper where the dye colors get down into the paper itself. While we're at it, I'm going to go back into that tree line because some of these these shapes have sort of disappeared a little bit. So I'm just going to here and there go back in. Just like so. And I'm just looking out my window. So um, if you don't have a great view out your window or you're not inspired particularly by what you see, you can do this in your car. If you live in a warm climate, you could do it on a bench. Um, it's always preferable to work from life rather than a photograph, but if that's all you've got, that could make a, a nice afternoon study. And of course, always look to the masters. 
So if you um, get on your computer, you can Google up uh, watercolor masters. Some of the great British watercolor painters are um, would would you would benefit greatly by copying some of the the paintings that they've done. All right. Well, I think I'm just about done here. My paper's still fairly wet, so I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use my heat tool to help it along a little bit. So I'm going to um, mute the sound so you're not gonna hear me for, for a few moments. And then I'll be back and I'll show you what I would do next. Oh, there was something else I wanted to show you too. So if, um, if you were thinking that you might like to do a little bit of a spatter technique with some white for snowflakes, I'll show you that. So I have a, I have one of my clear blocks here that has some white paint on it. I have an old toothbrush. I'm just going to get that wet and I'm just going to pick up some of that paint. This is going to be very subtle. There we go. And then just yeah, it's a little it's a little too wet. Maybe I'll come back after after I um, dry it off a little bit and do that. So hang on while I mute the sound. Okay, I'm back, and I'm just gonna, now that the paper's a little more dry, I'm gonna see if we can get some of this. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. All right, so now we've got a little bit of something that looks like snowflakes coming down. I'm going to go ahead and clear off my surface here. The paper is not completely dry, but it's dry enough. And I'm going to grab my cut and emboss machine. So here we go. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, I'm going to cut my I'm going to cut my paper in half. So this paper measures 5 by 7. So I'm going to 
cut that. At three and a half. So there are my two pictures. Okay. And now if I grab the um, the third from the largest deckled rectangle die. I can pop that in here and it's going to give me a beautiful deckled edge, which I love. And that's going to imitate what you would see on a fine piece of watercolor paper. So I'm just going to frame my image. Actually, maybe I'll try the slightly larger die. So let's see. Let's see how that looks. I like that better. It's pretty tight. I can just, I think I'll just make it through if I'm careful and get that arranged properly. Let's give that a try. There's my beautiful deckled edge, and I love that. Um, because I already cut my gold with the with the same size, I, I am going to switch to. I know it's a little confusing. I'm going to switch to the smaller smaller die just so I can show you how that looks together with the with the distressed gold border. Oops. Get that on there. The way I want it. It looks pretty good. So, I'll show you two different ways. So here is the picture that was cut out using the larger, oh, look who's here. What are you doing here? Everybody, this is Cersei. Let's see if we can get her to say hello to the camera. There she is. Hi. She's getting so big. She's enormous. Look, she she used to be a tiny kitten. Now she can't even fit on the on the frame. Now here is the smaller picture with the gold. All right. So all I'm going to do to mount that up is I'm going to take my liquid glue. Put a little bit of glue around the edge. Get that on there. Now, if you want a sentiment on your card. There are some very nice sentiments. I'm thinking that I'm actually going to use one of these cards as a Valentine card. So there we go. I'm going to get my bone folder. 
give that a nice burnish. And I can see my card is not straight, so I'm going to have to straighten that out a little bit. There we go. All right, so there is a very pretty winter scene that has that nice deckled edge both on the watercolor paper and on the gold paper. Now here we have another one. I want to show you another way you can get a pretty gold edge. So I've got my gold ink out here. And I put a couple of drops right on the surface of my ink pad. Grab my sponge. And I'm just getting a little bit of that blob of ink on my sponge. I, I don't want it to soak into the sponge because I want to add a heavy kind of a gold border. Just a little, but I want it to show. I don't want it to be soft. I want it to be um, noticeable. And so that's why I'm adding the extra ink. And this is going to help to define that beautiful deckled look. A real deckled edge is actually a, a torn edge, or it's actually a natural edge that the paper pulp creates when, when it's poured onto the screen during the paper making process. You can imitate it by tearing your paper, which is usually what I do. But for these little cards, these deckled framelits work beautifully. Okay, let's see. Uh-oh, Sandra, she's answering a question. She says no, and I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> All right. Um, maybe I was asking about snow. All right, there's Cookie. Hi, Cookie. All right, so, so now I have something that has a little bit of a distinction around the edge. I'm going to go ahead and get my glue started here. There we go. You don't need much glue. The, the multi-purpose liquid glue is very strong. And I love this stuff because you're, you have so many uh, options when you use it. It's, it's so much more versatile than the other adhesives. So I, I tend to use it almost all the time. And, um, and of course, it gives you that extra little bit of wiggle room to be able to shift your layers exactly where you want them. Now, I do have a stamp set here that has a very nice sentiment. This is called Winter Owls, and it has the sentiment that says, may you have time to enjoy the quiet moments of this season. And I think I may put that on the inside of the card. So I'm just gonna hold off for a minute until I figure out exactly how I'm gonna use these cards. But I wanted to share that with you because um, the snow is so pretty out there right now, and uh, before you know it, it's going to be spring. So there you are, one painting cut in half to create two cards, one with the distressed gold mat behind it, and one with just a little bit of gold ink. Now, all of the things, all the supplies and materials that I used to create these cards, I will be posting right here in my Facebook group and also in a link down in the comments. So if you're interested in any of these things, just let me know. 
The, um, the Watercolor Card Club is a monthly subscription where I talk about all sorts of watercolor and painting with ink techniques and, um, and how you can paint a new subject each and every month. And if you're interested in the Watercolor Card Club, I'll post that uh, information. And you can also find it on my website at dandeliancottagedesign.com. Just look for Watercolor Card Club and you'll find all the information there. Now, there is a special going on right now. I have to let you know, I almost forgot. But you can get that glass mat for free if you um, purchase a starter kit. And if you're just beginning with watercolor, um, I would recommend that you that you check out the supplies for this project today and you could use those in your starter kit and you can purchase $125 worth of product and pay only $99 and get that glass mat for free and that's a $60 value. So it's a super good deal. It's only a temporary thing so that glass will uh, Matt will only be available until the end of February. If you have any questions at all, please send me a message and I'd be happy to um, take you through it. And um, there's also more information on my website. So that's my painting for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Stay warm, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next time.